been a while since I've done one of these, so I can't promise perfection. Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror, it appears no friend. Of Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Pitch This here on the Mr. Eli Mac channel. I'm your host, Mr. Eli Mac, and today I'm finally going to be doing the pitch this that many people have been asking about ever since I released my what if the MCU was the DCCU phases one through four people have been asking me because I hinted multiple times like what would you have done with the TV shows like the agents of shield the daredevil like the Netflix the Hulu the ABC shows what would you have done with that well I am glad to tell you that I am finally here to tell you all what I would do with the TV shows. But before I actually get into the pitches, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. That way you can be up to date with all the videos I have here on the channel. Also, hit the notification bell. That way you can be notified whenever a new video like this or other videos that I have in mind come your way. So, I'm just gonna start off with all these pitches with sort of the first shows that were introduced. Now, I'm not going to be touching any of the Disney Plus shows that were released during Phase 4 because I already covered all those shows in Phase 4, and you can go over and watch that video if you're curious about the Disney Plus shows. Same with the Phase 5 Disney Plus shows. I'll be covering those shows when I get to Phase 5. When Phase 5 of the MCU is fully wrapped up, I will go talk about all those shows just when I get to it. But yes, I'm only going to be focusing on the shows that were released on like ABC for specifically the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. analog, the Agent Carter analog, and yes, the Inhumans analog. Don't worry, I have something planned for that. And when I do the Netflix shows, I'm going to be doing the analogs for all the Defenders plus Punisher. And I'm going to be also doing the Hulu shows, which will include, and the last one will surprise you, The Runaways, Hawk and Dove. I know Hawk and Dove was on Freeform, but I'm just connecting that with the Hulu shows because they connected it in Season 3. And Hellstrom. I, again, I've done my research. Hellstrom is technically a part of the MCU, though very loosely. It is still connected to the MCU, so I will be addressing my connection what I would do like the DCU per portion of that man my tongue has been tied I've not done one of these videos in a long time so without any further ado let's get into the ABC shows because those were sort of the first shows before we started delving into the Netflix universe with Daredevil and anything like that ABC was really the precursor to all of that so I'm gonna start with the ABC shows of the MCU what I would do with them. So this one may surprise you. I think a lot of people would be suspecting that because it's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I would do Agents of Argus. Now the only reason why I'm not doing Agents of Argus is because around the time when some of these movies would be coming out Argus wasn't a thing. Argus really didn't become a thing until 2011 so because of that they wouldn't have been in the Batman movie, or my Batman movie, like how they did, oh, just call us S.H.I.E.L.D., like Street of Homeland, like they did in Iron Man. We wouldn't be addressing them because they don't exist. Argus doesn't exist. The closest thing would be Agents of Checkmate, but I don't want to do anything with Checkmate. So instead of doing that, I'm doing something that's a little bit more connected with Superman and sort of some of the science of the universe because we I would have introduced them in the flash and they would have had more of a presence in the Superman film and that is Star Labs. Star Labs is getting a show and it is the Agents of Shield analog. They would be separated into the seven seasons, I believe. Let me double check my notes. Yes, the seven seasons that I have for this idea. And it would be very much just the seven seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But I am going to go into a little bit more depth. I'm going to read at least the synopsis that I have written for each season. And then I'll be more specific on the characters that get introduced through this. So, 
buckle up, let's get into the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. analog, Star Labs. And it's going to be starting with Season 1, and the synopsis basically like, Star Labs, the organization that helped Superman and the Justice League against Starro, have gotten a sanction by the government. Explore and discover new oddities of the world. And the team will consist of Dr. Janet Clyburn, who I would have introduced in Superman and have her be sort of like the Phil Coulson of the group. Dr. Karen Beecher, a.k.a. Bumblebee. Diego Irigoyen, a.k.a. Amon. Garner Grail, a.k.a. Atomic Knight. And Dr. Thomas Morrow. However, it is revealed that a criminal organization that is creating robots to reach the discoveries first the name of the organization the future men and very much i want to establish the main antagonist sort of would be sort of just this hidden hidden organization known as the future men and i very want to establish like the agents sort of like agents of shield how the first part of the season would be just them going on their little adventures and then the big twist would be oh this person's actually been a bad guy the entire time and then we try to unravel that little situation which if you've probably guessed it the main antagonist is actually dr thomas morrow and he's the leader of the future men and he's creating characters like this would sort of be the introduction i know in agents or the agents of shield the um justice league panic in the sky which is my age of ultron analog i specifically mentioned that red tornado is in it and he's created from the ultron or the brainiac bits and pieces that they're able to get and create Red Tornado. Well, that is technically the second variation of Red Tornado that I am introducing in this universe. We will be getting the first iteration here. Red Tornado would actually be the original first version, would be introduced here as sort of like an antagonist. And then we would get the second variation where we would very much reference how in the first, we would reference, at least in that movie, we would reference how there is a version of Red Tornado that was already created, and now we're just making a better version, a good version of him. So yeah, we would, I would make reference to, in that one, this version. And then we're also getting Red Volcano, who I think is another character that I put in Superman the Tower of Babel, who would be another recreation. Just bringing characters back. And I'm very much making this season of the show and the idea of the future man very similar to the future men or the red robots of the young justice where red tornado and red volcano were created by tio Morrow, but also i have characters like red inferno who was a character that was created in like the 40s i want to say or like a re similar to firebrand who i think that's the character that i was inspired by that's red inferno and then also red torpedo and those characters would also be sort of members of the future men who are heroes but are actually working for tomorrow the entire time another character that would be sort of revealed to be a robot is a character that would be clara kendall aka tomorrow woman another person who thinks she is a actual hero but she's actually a robot the entire time and she would sort of be the um in my mind she is would be written as sort of like the Deathlock character, where it's like he gets introduced as sort of like a hero type character, but then like he gets construed into this antagonistic force until like he ultimately does something that saves the day. That would sort of be her entire position. And ultimately at the end of the show, end of the season, a lot of these red characters would get destroyed, but Tio Morrow would get away sort of continuing to be sort of like Agent Ward. No, that's his name. Ward. Agent Ward. Sort of like his character in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. where he gets away in this season and then we continue on in the next season of him being a nuisance character. And that's very much season one. And we would also have like Dr. Emile Hamilton make a cameo in this season sort of being the Nick Fury character where he appears in like the beginning and the end and it's like, oh look, a connective tissue that's sort of bigger than the show but is still sort of needing to be connected. And that's sort of what season one is about. The main team of Dr. Janet Clyburn, Bumblebee, Amon, and Atomic Knight going around with Dr. Tiamaro before he turns evil and looking up, just going on weekly missions of the scientific oddities. And then the big reveal of Tiamaro actually being a bad guy. That's, the, that's basically season one of Star Labs. Season two of Star Labs 
is the continuation. Like, after the betrayal, this is the synopsis of season two. After the betrayal of Dr. Tio Maro, the team is left with a robot he created called Red Tornado, which would later on be renamed as Cyclone. So this is sort of the second Red Tornado, sort of similar to the Cyclone that was introduced in the Black Adam movie, but not the same at the same time. I, I know it sounds a little confusing, but this version of Red Tornado is different than the version that we would get in Panic in the Sky, Justice League Panic in the Sky. But anyway, the Star Labs team must find ways to stop what Dr. Morrow is doing. However, with an android named Maxine Hunkel Cyclone, aka the new Red Tornado, on their side, they may have a chance to defeat their former ally. Also, Dr. Morrow has is joined by his mentor, Professor Anthony Ivo, and very much the team is now Dr. Janet Clyburn, Bumblebee, Amon, Atomic Knight, with Cyclone with them. Dr. Emil Hamilton continues to cameo in this one. But then Dr. Tio Morrow very much is continuing to be the main antagonist of sorts, but now he's being joined by Professor, Professor Anthony Ivo, and this is the season where we get the Amazo robot and how Amazo sort of would work in this universe in this universe and how he's very much stationed with the star labs tv show and also like in this season we would get the end of dr tio morrow i don't want to stretch his storyline out too long i think two seasons is enough for dr morrow but also professor anthony ivo professor ivo is more of the antagonistic force in this season than morrow it's sort of like the first season is dedicated to Morrow, and then the second season starts to be a little bit more dedicated to Ivo being the main antagonist, and Dr. Morrow is like, hey, why are you sort of, like, without actually saying this, why are you more of the antagonist than I am? And Anthony Ivo being like, well, it's because I have this robot called um, Amazo. That's why I'm more of the main antagonist than you are now. And Dr. Morrow would actually die in season two. And yeah, that's, that's the basic premise of season two, just them continuing to do their adventures with our new member of the team, Cyclone, and just them trying to do stop Dr. Morrow, Professor Ivo, and the Amazo robot. And then we move on to season three of Star Labs, which brings in more of the Hydra elements that were in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., except this time it's a different sort of organization. So going on with the synopsis for season three after finally defeating dr morrow the star labs team is being joined by ronnie raymond and dr martin stein who combine to make firestorm however it is discovered that the firestorm matrix is severely unstable and created another firestorm that was a member of the cobra cult this firestorm is a combination of valentina vostok and savarozic savarozic Russian name I don't know how to say and after they defeat the Cobra Firestorm they finish contending with Professor Ivo and his android so very much this is very much again another thing of two halves of the story where Professor Ivo and Amazo is continuing to be an antagonist whereas um, Cobra the Cobra cult is very much a major force of antagonism for the team. In fact, I don't know if I mentioned this, but in my Justice League Panic in the Sky movie idea, the intro of the film would be the Justice League going after um, and trying to stop the Cobra cult. And that's sort of the connective tissue between um, the, the Hydra and this universe, whereas Cobra is sort of more of the Hydra in this universe. And we would get an evil version of Firestorm. Ultimately, that's what I would want to do. And Ronnie Raymond's Firestorm and Dr. Martin Stein would join the team. And ultimately, Cyclone, because she is an android, she would leave the team trying to find herself in this world of trying, like knowing she's an android in this world of humans. And even throughout this entire season, she would be the one with the biggest art of just her trying to find herself and her trying to be more trying to be more human than android and she would leave the team ultimately and she would eventually come back for the um justice league rebirth story in the movie universe as sort of like a hero but ultimately she really her main crux of stories deal are dealt in season two and season three of star labs but we still have the team of 
Dr. Clyburn, Bumblebee, Amon, and Atomic Knight. Those are sort of the main four of this universe and of this team and of this show. Cyclone is, again, was introduced in season two and leaves in season three, and I wanted this cast, at least characters, to be sort of like multiple, where we can like interchange characters. And in the next season, we're gonna get sort of a very massive character appearing. And ultimately, Cobra, Firestorm, like the two people that would combine to be Cobra, Firestorm, they die, which is Valentina Vostok and Savatsevich. I can't pronounce his name. I don't know his name, so I'm not, I should not even try, but they ultimately die, and Professor Ivo goes to jail, and Amazo is destroyed, and that's, that's the story, that's the basic premise. It's hard when it comes to the ABC shows, because their shows are more procedural, and it's very hard to tell the story, because they're having to fill in 22 episodes, or more, or less, and it's just trying to plot out that story is really hard because a lot of it is just filler episodes and so I'm just basically telling you here's the main premise and we're just gonna move on and because I can't tell you what happens in all 22 episodes and so and then we move on to season four of Star Labs which the synopsis is after stopping Ivo and Amazo Star Labs discovered that their rival company Cadmus Labs has been creating clones they discover one named Project KR or Project Krypton. They take him and call him Connor. They soon discover that he is a clone of Superman and Lex Luthor. They keep him away from Cadmus and try to take Cadmus down permanently. So in my universe, sort of cloning is illegal of sorts, and sort of the main antagonists are Paul Westfield and Dr. Dabney Donovan of the of Cadmus. They're sort of the main antagonists. And the way they find Connor in this sort of, in my mind of this season, is that he's being tortured and he's being used as a lab experiment. He's not really used as, like, he's not being treated properly. So when they discover him, they try to get him away and they try to save him. And they're sort of the ones that give Connor, aka Superboy, if you're wondering, sort of a better look on life. And they're the ones that try to, that very much steer him into the good direction and not the evil. Also, for all the people, if you were ever curious on when we were going to get Bizarro in a Superman movie, you weren't. You're getting Bizarro in Season 4 of Star Labs, where he is also a clone made by Cadmus Lab, but he is Bizarre-Zero, or B-Z-O, Bizarro. I, don't, I just preferred to call him Bizarre-O, because I just thought that would be funny in my mind. And so, yeah, we would get Bizarro in this world in this season where he's also sort of a clone of Superman, but he looks more like Connor because I don't think we could get Henry Cavill to do the season, fourth season of Star Labs, even if it was just for a few episodes. I think that would be a little bit hard to afford him in this period since this season would be coming out in 2016 where he's a little busy doing the entire Tower of Babel storyline. And yeah, that's sort of this season, just Star Labs dealing with Cadmus Lab. And also, if you know a little bit about Dr. Jenic Clyburn's character, she's a character that develops cancer in the comics. And I think she even dies in the comic. And I'm bringing, up, uh, bringing that up now because I'm moving to season five now, which that would be Dr. Clyburn's final season. That would be very much her final season with the team sort of continuing on with the entire... Um, what am I doing? The Coulson thing, where main Coulson, not the LMD Coulson, but main Coulson dies after season five, and he does come back in season six and season seven, but I'm not doing that with Dr. Clyburn. For me, when she dies, she's done with the show. She's no longer with the show. She, we are moving on from her and getting sort of a new main character, and that new main character would be Bumblebee. Uh, Dr. Karen Beecher. She would sort of be the main character. And so the team would look different after this season, but it's still Clyburn, Bumblebee, Amon, Atomic Knight, Martin Stein, and Firestorm. And now Superboy is a part of our Star Labs team. So that's our team going into season five. But the synopsis for season five is Star Labs is slowly losing government funding because of all the tragedies that they've been publicly connected to, you know, with the red, the future men and the red robots, Amazo the Cobra Cult, and with Cadmus Labs. However, the team doesn't care as they try to stop an unknown alien invasion by the Gordanians. And the Gordanians are a group of villains that I wanted to find a way to put in, especially when I was trying to work around, like, 
the Netflix stuff, and we'll get to that in the ne in another episode of Pitch This. But very much the Gordanians will be sort of the Cree stand-ins for the season with the aliens and all that. And we're also going to get, I am going to have the Graviton, like, because this is going to be a character that would be a recurring character in the other shows or the other seasons. And just this is when she gets to her big moment, which is Becky Sharp, a.k.a. Hazard. Hazard is a character that was for, that was introduced in the comics, but she's most notably in one of, I think, season four of The Flash. And she would very much be a character that is one of the military liaisons that they meet up. Sort of, again, like Glenn Talbot was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's just now, this is Becky Sharp, a.k.a. Hazard. And again, I just like the idea of Hazard. I like her powers, and I think that would work with oh, the world is ending, and this is how it's ending. And very much like when the show, the season would end, it would end with Hazard dying and all of the Gordanians being beaten and their leaders being killed. And then it would ultimately end with Dr. Clyburn dying of her cancer, unable to find a way to fully cure it. So she would die ultimately at the end of season five. And then we move on to season six of Star Labs. Again, there were seven seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so I made sure each season got touched upon. And so we're moving on to season six, where it is sort of, yeah, because this, because season six takes place, season six of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. takes place after, after, um, of, of, takes place after, no, I don't know. I don't know what my brain is trying to say, but for me, like, I don't do a lot of time passage between um, Dark Side War, Justice League Dark Side War, and Justice League Rebirth, like only a few months pass. I don't do the five years later. I don't do that. I just do a few months pass between the movies. So, what this is to continue with the synopsis of season six of Star Labs, after the events of Justice League Rebirth, Star Labs considers disbanding their field team. However, the team is able to convince them to stay together so they can stop a terrorist organization called The Agenda from trying to destroy every Star Labs facility for unknown reasons. And for the main team, it is Bumblebee, Amon, Atomic Knight, Firestorm, Martin Stein, and Ronnie Raymond, and Superboy. They are the, our main heroes. And I was sort of trying to find an equivalent to the alien bad guys that they had the fight that Agents of Shield had to fight in season, season six, so, but I couldn't really. So instead, I just um, found an evil organization that was dealing that Star Lab sort of had to deal with, and that was the Agenda. And the leader of that team would be Contessa Erica Alexandra Del Potenza, who in the comics is sort of like the wife, I think, of Lex Luthor. And so I very much wanted a character that was connected to Lex Luthor in some way to be a major antagonist eventually in the show. And so here you go. This is a character connected to Lex Luthor as the main antagonist of season six and the leader of the agenda. And we would also have a character like Amanda Spence, who is very much connected with Contessa, Erica, Alexandra, Del Potenza in the show, and also... General Good, who is another character related to the agenda. He's a character that would die, whereas Contessa and Amanda Spence would just get arrested. And yay, Star Labs field team did great work and they beat the agenda. Again, like when it comes when it comes to the Star Lab show, that's these are the hardest ones to fully plot out. The other ones are a little bit easier. These are hard because they are longer. Long seasons. So yeah. But now we're gonna move on to the final season of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. equivalent, Star Lab Season 7, and I've, this is the synopsis. It's the final season, the last mission, the team must go on. The team must stop a time-traveling criminal who is trying to take artifacts throughout time to ultimately reshape reality. The team is th the team is the only team that can stop Kronos with the help of time traveler Rip Hunter. So the team now is Bumblebee, Amon, Atomic Knight, Firestorm, Superboy, and Rip Hunter. I know I said earlier that I really wanted this team to be like a rotating door of cast members. I ultimately now realize I forgot to do that throughout the throughout when I was first plotting it out. But yeah, this is this is the team. This is sort of like the main team. I would have Dr. Clyburn make a cameo appearance in this season because we're dealing with time travel. I would also have 
Cyclone return for an episode because, again, time travel. But yeah, Kronos would ultimately be the main antagonist because in the final season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. they dealt with a lot of time travel and I wanted that to sort of continue into this season where they're dealing with a lot of time travel. And so Kronos is the person that they're trying to chase after with Rip Hunter's help. Rip Hunter would, would have been a character that I think I established in one other property. I can't remember. My brain's a little like... Bleh trying to remember all these little pieces that I did in videos a long time ago, last year in December. So yeah, Rip Hunter would be a major character in this season trying to help the Star Labs field team beat Kronos, and ultimately in the end, they do beat Kronos. He's erased from history. Like, I even have that written down. Erased from history. I'm like, okay, I just wiped out an entire fun character. Cool. And then ultimately at the end of the season, it would end with the Star Labs field team ultimately disbanding because Star Labs is sort of like, we don't need the field team anymore because the crazy science oddities aren't really in existence anymore. Also, the Justice League is sort of like gone at the moment. Like the main Justice League is gone and there's no major, major, major threat happening right now. So we don't really need the team anymore. And so they all go their separate raids. Bumblebee, Amon, Atomic Knight, Firestorm, Superboy, they all go their separate ways, and Rip Hunter goes back to the future. And that is the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. analog Star Labs. I hope you really enjoyed that because that was, how much time? A lot of time going through that one, that one show. And yeah, I'm, I think Star Labs would be a fun, interesting show, especially if you very much focus it on the, hey, look at all this science stuff. Science is fun. And very much early on, like, Clyburn and and Bumblebee would be more of the science people of the team. And Amon and, and Atomic Knight would be more of the, hey, we're trying to protect you. We're sort of like the security. And then Cyclone would be someone that's very much a heroic character. Once you introduce Firestorm with Martin Stein and Firestorm, Martin Stein would also be joining the science portion. Superboy would get joined would join in and be a very much a super character like Amon and Atomic Knight. And so I really wanted to have unique characters that I know for a fact would never get explored in the movies or I never explored in the movies. And so I had these sort of characters. And I know a lot of people probably would with the Ant-Man and the Wasp one, they would have probably done Adam and Bumblebee, but I was very much, in my mind, I'm like, Hawk girl, Hawk Man, or like the Hawk people, are very connected to the Adam more so than Bumblebee, in my opinion. So I very much wanted that to be Adam and Hawk person, which eventually became Adam and Hawk girl. And I like that combo. So yeah, and now we're moving on to the next ABC show that was created, which was the Agent Carter analog. And if you know this, you you should know. If you know the Agent Carter, my Agent Carter, my Peggy Carter was Lois Lane. So that means I'm doing a Lois Lane show. And there's only two seasons of it, so Rachel McAdams doesn't have to worry about being in too much. Also, they're short seasons. So, again, she doesn't have to worry about being in so a lot. So, also, these are shows where a reporter is doing reporter stuff. I think that would be very fun to do. So the synopsis for Lois Lane Season 1, Lois Lane, ace reporter, fights her way through multiple obstacles to get the best stories. However, this newest story may be harder than she thought. With Jimmy Olsen by her side, she tries to uncover the secrets about Intergain and uncover Morgan Edge's owner of the planet of the Daily Planet, connection to the crime enterprise. So ultimately, I am revealing who the owner of the Daily Planet is, which is Morgan Edge, and I'm also trying to show a connection between him and Intergang because at one point in the comics, Morgan Edge was the leader of Intergang. Not Bruno Mannheim is sort of like the most notable like leader of Intergang. And though and I do have Bruno Mannheim in the show. He is sort of the second in command compared to Morgan Edge or he is the leader of Intergang and just Morgan Edge is associated with him. And that's sort of the story uh, of this show. It's sort of sort of Lois Lane trying to reveal the corruption of the person in charge of the Daily Planet and Perry White very much telling her, hey, don't do this because he he gives us the money to do what we're doing and I really don't think it'd be a good idea. But Lois, because she is the ace reporter she is, goes with Jimmy and uncovers the mystery behind Morgan Edge, which is he is connected with Inner Gang and she finds a way to get Morgan Edge and 
Bruno Mannheim and all of Intergang arrested. Am I doing anything further with Intergang that connects them with Apocalypse and the Book of Crime? No, I am not. I do not want to go that in depth with Intergang because when I'm doing all this, I already have all the stuff with Dark Side and Apocalypse and the New Gods. They're over there and I'm boiling them ready for getting them ready for Justice League Dark Side War. I don't want to start putting hints in Lois Lane. We, we're already getting hints that Dark Side's coming. I don't need to do any more hints. And so Morgan Edge is just sort of the business bad guy, corporate bad guy. And then Bruno Mannheim is the, the, the crime boss. And that's sort of what season one of Lois Lane is all about. Just taking down the corporate bad guy, the corporate businessman, and taking down the local mafia, which is the inner gang. And that's Lois Lane season one. Lois Lane season two continues the trend that Agent Carter had, which Agent Carter in season two went off to Los Angeles to take out bad guys. And so I'm continuing that here in Lois Lane Season 2 with this synopsis. Editor-in-Chief Perry White has sent Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen on an assignment to Star City, to the Star City branch of the Daily Planet. There she meets the Editor-in-Chief of Star City's Daily Planet, Franklin Stern. The three work together to write an expose about Daniel Brickwell, aka Brick, and his criminal empire. And so very much it's just... Um, Lois and Jimmy go out to Star City, work with Franklin Stern to take down crime boss Brick. And they are successful when they do it, because sometimes all you need... Uh, the Lois Lane shows is basically... The Lois Lane show is basically when you do Woodward and Bernstein as a show. And I think that would be an interesting show. I think that would be a fun show, and this season two is just, hey, we're gonna send you out to Star City, and you're gonna try to take down this mobster as well in that happened she takes down the mobster with using her words and sometimes you don't need super criminals or you don't need superheroes and superman and green arrow do not appear in the show at all because green arrow star city you would expect it but it's not superman doesn't appear because again henry cavill is a little busy being a superhero rachel mcadams and all the other characters in in the lois lane show aren't really busy and focusing on the superhero stuff so they're very it's a whole lot easier for them to just focus on doing these smaller stories and that's very much what the Lois Lane show is meant to do do smaller stories again with characters that wouldn't be the main focus of movies and I and I just like that idea and yeah that's the Lois Lane show and now we move on to the final show that ABC released which was which is my Inhumans analog in the Inhumans analog is the Legion of Superheroes because I want to put the Legion of Superheroes in this version of the DCCU and I they were originally when I was first conceiving the idea of this universe they were the Green Lantern Corps they were where the Green Lantern Corps was and then I thought about it and I was like no nah, I want to do the Green Lantern War and I want and I think the Green Lantern would work better in this position so I decided to put the Legion of Superheroes in the Inhumans part so if this is a good show or not, we can imagine it is, or we can say that they're just like the Inhumans where this show is bad and only lasted a season. But I just say it's a limited series, so we're just going to work with that. So the synopsis for the Legion of Superheroes limited series is, in the 31st century, crime is no different from the 21st century, except that it spans universes. Discrimination still exists, however, it, it's only between Earthlings and aliens. Now, a gang of criminals known as the Five, or the Fatal Five, or the Fearsome Five, I don't know, they're the Five, I think they're the Fatal Five, fight to destroy everything that the United Planets built. It is up to a ragtag group consisting of the determined Rock Kryn, aka Cosmic Boy, the quippy Garth Rands, aka Lightning Lad, the introverted Imram Ardeen, aka Saturn Girl, the savage Bryn Londo, aka Timberwolf, and the enigmatic Quarrel Docs, aka Brainiac 5. Together they are the Legion. And so I very much wanted to focus on there are only five members of the Legion of Superheroes in when they debut. There's only five, and it's Cosmic Boy, Lightning Lad, Saturn Girl, Timberwolf, and Brainiac 5. And also, if you see my little fan casting that I have in front of me, I did something very on the nose, but I don't care. I just had five members of the Harry Potter cast be Legion of Superheroes because I thought that would be fun, and I wanted to get a little laugh. And so, yeah, they would be our main team that we would focus on, and then 
the Fatal Five, which is Emerald Empress, Mano, Persuader, Therok, and Velitas, they are sort of the main antagonists of it. And we do have other characters that would be in the show as well. One of the main supporting characters would be Tinya Wazo, or Wazo, who I believe is also Phantom Girl. So she would also be a character that would be a main supporting character, but then also maybe hint at the end of the show that maybe she would eventually join the Legion of Superheroes. But it's very much focused on the five Legionnaires working together and occasionally butting heads with each other and ultimately them fighting the five, the Fatal Five, and winning and they get, all get arrested and we move on and that's the end of the Legion of Superhero shows. I mean, that it's that simple. It's that simple. That's what I have for the ABC shows for what if the MCU was the DCCU. What are your thoughts on this idea? Do you disagree with some of the connections I have? Like, I, I'm already, for some reason, I'm already assuming that some of the people are going to look at my Star Labs analog for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and be like, no, it should have still been Agents of Argus, even with how the timeline works in the real world i think it sh should still be agents of argus i mean if you think that put them in the comments down below i would love to hear your thoughts on what you think i should have done with these shows and also like if you enjoy this please let me know because again i'm going to be doing the netflix shows next and then i'm going to be doing the hulu shows and then that's going to be all the shows that really existed in between that weird period of what is canon are these shows canon because in my in when i'm doing it they are canon they are very much very connected to the movies and i would make references again as i said in the very beginning where season one of star labs has red tornado and red volcano very much when we would be reintroduced to red tornado in the second justice league movie i would make reference to oh yeah this is sort of like the thing that professor dr morrow created back all the way back then same with red volcano it's like oh lex luther recreated red volcano and just made some tweaks to it but yeah i would make i just want these shows to be a little bit more connected and though i didn't outwardly express oh this is how they're connected there are just some tissues throughout the shows that you can sort of see how they're connected but yeah what are your thoughts on my ideas for all the seasons my ideas for the show analogs i would love to hear your thoughts also if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel that way you can be up to date with all the videos i have here on the channel also hit the notification bell that way you can be notified whenever the next dccu tv show goes up but until next time i've been mr eli mac you've been the audience and i hope you all have a great rest of the day.